have made it, disc golf fans, to the final round of the 2023 PDGA Professional Disc Golf World Championships presented by L.L. Bean. Again contesting the Fox Run course today for the finale of the World Championships. I'm Nathan Queen, again joined by Andrew Fish. And this chase card, you know they're here for that one next to the na- next to their name. Everyone, going to jockey for position a little bit, but the World Championship is what we're really here for. Anthony Barella, Chris Dickerson, Eagle McMahon, Matty O, our card today. Super excited to see them attack this course. We've seen a couple of these guys uh, numerous times this year, and they're all going to try to hunt down Isaac Robinson as well as a couple other players on that lead card. Yeah, Anthony Barella just four strokes off of the lead. The rest of the card just a bit farther back, uh, down to six strokes. Uh, so room to push with all the OB looming if Chase or if lead card does seem to break a bit. Getting into Anthony Barella's bag... The third round in a row, he's on our card, putting with that CT jawbreaker focus. Going to see lots of the Buzz and Malta out there, as well as the Athena Raptor and Force. Chris Dickerson, also sponsored by Discraft, putts with the CT Challenger OS, a couple other throwing putters in there. Throws the ESP Buzz for most of his mid shots, and I expect to see Undertaker, Captain's Raptor, and Force. Eagle McMahon on the card today, putting with that D-line flex rainmaker. You see some tactic and razor claw as well. Uh, Mindbender, probably see some FD2, FD3, PD, and Cloudbreaker. And Matt Orem, keeping it real simple. Classic judges his putter, throws the warden and harp. And for his drivers, I know that the flow and rive are getting most of the work for his distance shots. Hole one, great way to start it off, relatively short at 565 feet, but constrained all around by out of bounds after you cross an out of bounds area. Basket gonna kind of be tucked up to the right. Lots of different ways to attack this. Forehand plays, everything from putter to fairway driver, and then running into the green with something moving left to right. From Mesa, Arizona. He's representing this crowd. Can we make some noise for Anthony Barella? And Anthony Barella, third day on the card, and I played with him the first two rounds, so I am now going to see all five of Anthony Barella's World Championship bid rounds. And fortunately, he's a very aesthetically pleasing thrower to watch, so Nathan's not even sick of it yet. Not a bit. One of my favorite jerseys that have come out this year, and a nod to baseball. Yeah, excellent theme there. A few weeks ago at Idlewild, AB told me he was really having trouble with the with his release point so fascinating to see him figure that out only a couple short weeks later able to throw shots like this perfect position about 240 away from the basket maybe even less chris dickerson mounting a charge late in the season after what seemed to be a slow start for at least chris uh, putting up some strong finishes and here on chase card for final round. And also a previous Green Mountain Championship winner. Spent a little bit of time on that lead card already this year. I'm sorry, already this tournament. This is floating to the left side. We'll need to grab some hard grass. But that is going to be out of bounds. He will take a drop throwing three now. Next to the tee. From Boulder, Colorado. He's representing Team Discmania. I believe he smashed the course record at Fox to bits yesterday. Woo! Let's put our hands together for Mr. Eagle McMahon. Well, that is an accurate introduction. 14 down. Pretty stellar from Eagle McMahon. I don't know if it was nervous or if his hand is really that sweaty already, but you could hear him that entire intro smacking that bag. <laughs> onto his frisbee, trying to get it ready. And the Eagle looking to back up that magnificent course record yesterday. Gets a hold of this one a little straight, but is going to bounce backwards and come back in bounds. Yeah, maybe don't ask too many questions about that one, Eagle. From Criola, Alabama. He is representing West Side Discs. 
Can we get a little giddy up from Maddie? Oh, Maddie, oh! Yeah. I love that Maddie O is exactly the person he is. He doesn't try to be anything more or less. Does feed off that crowd energy. And so many great finishes at Worlds previous. And getting a really large skip, he's going to end up finding that OB line on the left. And that's something you, you, I mean, it's early on in the round, so it's hard to say you can't do it. But you pretty much can't do that to start your round here. This is one of the easier holes on the course. 59% of the field carding the birdie. Need to start your round off with a birdie here on chase card. Certainly. And Eagle capitalizing on that favorable break to bounce back inbounds. It's about circle's edge. Dickerson trying to cover his mistake. Also into circle one. Now going to be putting for par. Matteo from a similar position now. Going with a very overstable forehand. Needs this to check up. And it does end up curling around. He's going to be inside circle one, also looking to save par. And Barella going to try to seize some momentum early from a couple of his card mates. Tagged down by that tree that's about 45 feet. Does get to 31 or so. But going to be the first to throw his putt. And as he's done the majority of the week, going to connect on that one. Start his round off with a nice birdie. Absolutely. And if there's any trace of nerves, we sure didn't see it in the tee shot or the putt, which is where most of those tend to manifest. Yeah. If you can execute both of those, sometimes an errant up shot is still going to card you the birdie. Chris Dickerson is able to save that par. Move off with no red. Eagle McMahon looking to take advantage of a nice bounce. And a little low, but centered. Eagle going to card that scramble birdie. And Orem, distinctive putting style. Doesn't take a whole lot of time. He kind of sees the putt, feels it, and then jams it. And there it is, able to card the par after going OB. So the stats for today are we've had a cut. 87 players are going to cash. However, 93 have made it due to ties. Moving us into hole two, again birdied less than hole one today. 250 feet, pretty tight gap to hit off of the tee. You do have some OB coming in right, long, and left. Uh, right and long is going to come into play most often, though. Morella with the soft Anheuser release and the fairly soft landing. Scoots is a little bit long, but well in position to potentially go two for two. Eagle McMahon gets through the original gap. Gets on down there nicely. He's going to be just a bit off to the left, but inside circle one. I think that's a really good sign for Eagle. You noted about Aaron Gossage that he doesn't slow his pace down very well. Eagle's arm speed looked great there. Dickerson makes easy work to the bullseye. Yeah, very well known for being able to slow that arm speed down. <laughs> We're from Eastern Tennessee. He is also well versed in the wooded throwing form. And the frustrating early, early release for Matteo. This left side can be hairy, so he's got to pick a gap. And a good scramble. He 
Eagle McMahon now for the first birdie attempt on hole two. Going to capitalize two for two to start the round. Once again, centers it up. They join Eagle with that two for two start. Dickerson gonna step up. And obviously easy pickings for him. Yeah, it's always nice when you can do all of the work off of the tee. Don't have any stress on that putting green. Hole three, 300 feet, gonna go uphill initially and then downhill about midway. Also is a mandatory forcing you to the left and out of bounds on the entire right side and then long of the basket as it slopes down. Kind of a cluttered green, likely to see mid-range backhands thrown to drift left late. Or, you've got the grenade over top. More of a safety play, I believe. I haven't seen it reach the pin just yet, as these trees are pretty tall right here. But well in bounds and looking at a long bid if he wants it. If if you've seen three rounds of this and it's not reaching the pin, I'm not sure I understand the play. I mean he's been in circle two the other two the other two rounds that I did see. Eagle gonna funnel left side. We'll see what kind of stance and line he's left with from that approximately circle two bid. This looks like a really nice line from Chris Dickerson. And it is going to check up pretty nicely even on this downslope. He's going to be probably 24, 25 feet. Hopefully with a clean putt as this green is pretty cluttered. Matteo, abbreviated run up, following Chris over towards that left side. And this two gonna put on the brakes a little more aggressively with some tree help. And Matt's gonna be putting for his first birdie. Looking pretty aggressive here, but did end up a little bit shy of the basket, is gonna be able to check up. We'll see. Hopefully he's got a clean line. And McMahon usually doesn't jump putt. That looked a little lungy, and he's going to fly past. We'll have a comebacker. Yeah, and it looks like Dickerson has some stuff in his way as well. He's stretching out pretty far left, but able to connect on that one. He's now got back-to-back -back birdies. Going to match Eagle and Anthony. AB does convert. Two out of three isn't a super hot start, but it definitely gets the ball rolling in the right direction if he would like to continue making a push on the rest of the lead card. Yeah, that's the minimum that you want through these first three holes is at least two down before you make that long walk over to hole four. Yeah, I really like that course flow, having nine on either side of the road and then three, nine, six is kind of the sequence there. A nice comeback for Eagle after a rare air ball. When you're outfitted for all that's out there, even the ordinary becomes extraordinary. So here's to taking a moment to appreciate every moment, made outside together. And after that walk across the road, we move to hole four, 630 foot par four. You'd like to get somewhere just around this bush to the left of it. From there, you have around 200 feet in, if not a little bit less. 
you stay back behind that bush, still well in position for a birdie, you just really got to make sure you land in bounds. Big high flex shot. Going to be best play here. This is lower than you see most, but it is going to make it over those trees. And barely crawling back in bounds. Absolutely want the height if you're going to push it that far to the right. Dickerson fairly far back, but will be open. Matteo with a good follow. Looks like a faster disc, so I think it'll fade more aggressively. And call that one nicely. Fades back to that left side. He's going to be just a little bit behind that bush, but well in position to throw whatever shot he would like. Anthony Barella to the fairway driver. Nice and high. Got some turn on it and then the late stall. Could be a little snookered, but only 230, 240 away from the bucket. Yeah, that's the first one we've seen so far this week. Contend with that bush. We'll see how obstructed he might be. This looks like a great line out of Eagle. Going to fade just in front of that bush, just to the side of it, and also a great position. Can throw whatever he would like to. Yeah, disc all the way down to the mid-range to mute any of the action. And it's a luxury to play this hole when there's no wind on it. Seems like Vermont's given us a uh, taste of everything in the Vermont summer weather pattern. Chris Dickerson earns the piece of candy that I stated you should get for, <laughs> la for landing on this island here. I'll make sure I find something for it next time I see him. Perella with the forehand from a knee. Uh-oh. We got it. We got another one. Nathan Queen and Willy Wonka doing some business together. We'll see we'll see this again. You see him kind of lunge forward, good width, and then the late stability. Yeah, beautiful shot from a bit of a stretched out position, showing the versatility there. And when there is no wind, you can just throw whatever you're comfortable with on a lot of these holes. Only a few really force a decision. Eagle with a little bit of a rollout, but still inside C1 with a chance for another bird. And Matteo also going with that forehand. Going to stick it right up there by the rocks or on the rocks. In between the rocks. It looks like he's wedged it in there. And Eagle high in the chains. Able to connect for birdie on the calmest I have ever seen the wind on this putting green. Everybody else gonna sort out who's up from nine feet or few nine feet or less. You can't draw this hole up much better. Four great drives, four great upshots, four easy putts, and we've got them diamonds. Hole five, 455 feet, a par three playing downhill. There's OB to the left and right. This right gap is probably the primary option. And if you can find yourself somewhere down in this ditch by the dam of the lake, you'll be in pretty decent position. Once again, fairly calm. So likely to see fairway driver, possibly distance driver. Thrown with a righty hyzer. This is a bit inside, but is going to sneak around those trees and get up inside circle two at that ditch. Tough putt to run from there. Um, likely odd footing or mushy footing. Certainly. Dickerson may test that. However, this is one of the greens known for rollaways or weird reactions. Matteo following that, maybe pushed a little further. And yes, does successfully beat the trees. And here's those rollaways you were talking about. Luckily, though, he does curl around before that OB line. 
Uh, gonna be right around Circle's Edge now, rather than Bullseye's Edge. Anthony Burrell is certainly able to disc down. This needs to get down. Soft landing, but still the curl. Yeah, gonna curl to a round circle's edge up that way with an opportunity to save the par at least. And Eagle McMahon, full power. And this is coming up well short. If that's thrown flat, I think he gets through. But instead, Heiser and very overstable disc combined to leave Eagle with about a 100-foot up shot. Yeah, it looked like he had a pretty open line, but difficult to land this one where it doesn't roll away. He's able to get that done, be just a little bit long in the pin. Dickerson now maybe trying to give this a floaty little bid. And nice of that to be low enough to not hit the basket. And he is gonna sit right there for an easy par. Barella for a par save. Not to force the narrative, but I think that's pretty big for his round to not give a stroke back to the course while he's chasing. Definitely so, still three down through five. Able to keep it clean, and even with the cut in the field, to 93 as Matty O able to connect for his third birdie in a row, gobble gobble. Hole five still plays as the hardest hole on the course today. I don't doubt it. Bonus distance, a lot of OB around, hard to access. 32% of the field taking a bogey or worse. But our card playing it relatively clean, one stroke under par in aggregate. Go from a hard hole to a, a very simple one. Yeah, um, as you might imagine, the easiest hole on the course again today. 265 feet. I guess we're going to say par two. As it averaged. I, I think so. <laughs> it averaged a 2.11 today. This is a little early for stats, but I'm going to do it just because this hole is, is the hole to do it on. 85 players out of 93 birdied this hole. Yep, and that's a way to do it. You throw a forehand <laughs> that kind of disappears out of your view late. Got to imagine everybody on this card is going to do that. Just an overstable fairway driver thrown with a little bit of hyzer. There's another way to do it. Whisker Tickler. Got an opportunity to win a generator with an ace here. Yeah, even at the pro level, kind of neat to have CTPs or prizes that are like that. Yeah, definitely so. A lot of players in vans or RVs at this point, generator can do a lot of good for you. Yeah, I'd sell mine if I want it, but I didn't happen to ace hole six. AB with a box tapper. And Eagle actually disking up to a distance driver so that he can throw this as soft as possible. We've said in previous coverage that he's still recovering a little bit from an elbow injury, though healthy enough to sling that up there successfully. Farthest away, 13 feet. Birdie number one. Birdie number two, four in a row for Matty O. Birdie number three. And birdie number four is going to put our entire card at four under par through six holes. Showing why they're up here on Chase Card.
What's up? This is George with Dark Ace wishing you a happy Worlds weekend. Check us out at darkacediscoff.com and for the next week, use code WORLDS23 at checkout for 15% off of your order. Now back to the action. Hole 7, listed at 1265, a par 5, going to play pretty consistently downhill. This creek divides the first half of the fairway. A couple bubbles here in the second half. You either choose to throw big on your first shot or big on your second shot. And then likely an OB carry down to the green, which is bounded by about 35 to 40 feet on all sides except the right. Still a lot of players doing this layup play, choosing to attack on their second. Matteo going to land himself on the flat. Pretty good angle into that second landing zone. Yeah, the way that the OB is set up this year really doesn't incentivize anybody to go for this. Pretty simple first shot to a big rip on the second shot. And again, with no wind, um, seems to make them play a little bit easier. So far, three simple solves. And Eagle does have a distance driver. Eagle may be looking for the Eagle opportunity here. Oh, he's going right at this tree. And in spite wow. of that, going to get the favorable forward boost into that bean. It would be interesting to see whether he still tries to attack the green from there. I'm not sure with that tree kick if he got as far as he was planning to. Certainly going to be in the high sixes for distance, I would think. This has got to go. And it is not going to be far enough. A little bit too nose up on that. Kind of stalled out before he got any turnover. Yeah, not sure if his footing failed him there. Matty O with the lower driven shot you'd like. This is pushing forward and then got a hyzer back into the dead center of that landing zone. Leaves him about 360 into the green. Yeah, very well executed for Matty O. That low line giving him that extra distance that we haven't really seen too much. Barella with the higher line. Tests the right side temporarily and now spikes down. A little bit short of Matt, but one more just like that. He'll be under the bucket. And Eagle not interested in going for it. So this is still a little bit of what I was talking about. So he does go farther right side and carry a little bit farther down the fairway. But still an OB carry. Uh, maybe to a point where he can throw a mid or a putter from there. I would think so. I, I got to imagine he's going to use that same overstable approach disc. Dickerson trying to carry, and he actually went long OB yesterday off the base. This time does it all natural, so he will be putting after two OB strokes for a six. And Anthony Barella, like you called, another high hyzer shot here. Going to bounce inbounds, get a little curl towards the basket, be right around circle's edge, probably inside circle two. Matt Orem, also a high floaty hyzer out to the right. And stalling in nicely. And shy of the OB. Eagle. Very overstable putter. Their mid range shot here. Curls up nicely just outside the bullseye. Going to be looking at a very easy birdie. Yeah, after that errant drive, fortunate to recover. And Dickerson going to have to settle for the seven. That's, that will stall his progress after, as you can see on his card, he had climbed all the way up to T3 in the event. And Anthony Barella looking to keep climbing. Going to leave this putt just a little bit low, though. 
Still going to maintain that bogey-free round. But you never want to give up strokes to step, especially Championship Sunday when Matty O's five for the last five. And Eagle also going to get to five down. Chris with the unfortunate double bogey there after two OB strokes. Going to move him back a bit. Moves us into hole eight. 410 foot par three with OB all the way around. Tight on the right side by the basket. Big high turnover shot with your understable disc. Get it to catch just a little bit of glide. You might be able to bend this corner and float up inside the circle. Too overstable, easy to fade out left. And Orm starts that very, rot, very wide left, breaks the entire way to inside the circle. By far one of the better tee shots we've seen. Eagle, rather than distance driver, going to disc all the way down to a mid. Wow. And that's what bonus power can do for you. He's trying to just overpower a disc, keep it gliding. This will stall on him. Yeah, it does stall out, but with it being a mid-range, doesn't end up finding the OB on the left side. Any any driver, fairway or not, fairway or distance, would uh, most likely have faded all the way out there. Barella to the fairway. This is hugged a little bit too much inside, perhaps. Wow. Nope. <laughs> well measured and overstable enough to flex out. Improves on Matteo's shot. This is such an incredible shot that so many people are figuring out the correct disc and height disc and height that they need to get this shot to bend like this. As Anthony Barella has now dialed it in, he's just outside bullseye. And and for context, he can't see the last half of that flight. It's so shielded by the right side trees that when he was practicing that, he probably just had to go pick up and say, I think this is what it did. And Dickerson doesn't get the height that you need on this for it to catch any glide. He's going to be in a common spot for people not on chase card. And we're kind of in this 80 to 90 foot range. Maybe give it a bid, but get your par. Yeah, fairly safe backdrop. But Chris will walk away with a three. Eagle. Puts it chain high, but unable to convert. We'll also take the par. And now Matteo and AB going to have a little putt off here. Oh, and just a little bit light on the right side. Doesn't catch. AB now looking to bounce back and match what Eagle and Matteo are at for the round. And it was AB on hole seven feeling like he... Let one slip. This time it's Matteo's turn. AB will convert here to get to five under. 70% of the field parring this hole. Just 20 or 21 players, uh, more than I expected, were able to card the birdie. And there you have the effect of the winless day. Players able to just throw it and let their own skill do the talking rather than how the wind's going to act on it. Hole 9, 480 feet downhill. OB to the left, OB to the right. A little bit of a mound in front of and a boulder behind this basket. Such a challenging distance because it's, it's driver for most players, perhaps fairway for some of the guys in this group. But you have to manage your wing angle as well as your nose angle to avoid the out-of-bounds. Yeah, today might seem a bit easier to these players with the wind as low as it is. This one's getting off to the left a little bit, or excuse me, off to the right, and it is going to grab inside that rough OB. Saw one kick back safe yesterday. This one kind of vacuumed in. 
So AB putting three from maybe circle two's edge, if not a little further. Looks like a good correction for Matty O here. It hyzers back at just about the right time, and he's going to be just on the other side of that boulder looking at a birdie putt here on hole nine. And I love the crowd's enthusiasm there. Big time crowd showed up today to, to cheer everybody on on this championship Sunday. Eagle once again disking down to the mid. Look how steep of a hyzer he's throwing this on. Another advantage to no wind on the hole, able to throw your understable discs. Use the glide of them rather than having to force something down there. And looks like he's going to be inside circle two. And Dickerson also with the hyzer release, trying to snap it up. And pretty well thrown, although too low. May want to take a test poke at this for the birdie. And Dickerson may be feeling like he's got a main gain some strokes on the card as well as the rest of the field. Burrell is third. Scooch is a little long. Eagle look like he, looking like he's going to give this a good bid. This green is tricky fast, but doesn't matter as he knows, that, knows it halfway there. He's got that flight. And as, as soon as that disc stops drifting, it gets back toward a hyzer wing angle. That's when Eagle's hand goes up, knowing he's tucked it in. Matty O looking to follow that up from the other side. Able to do it. He's going to match. Also six under on the round and 36 under on the week. And that two-stroke swing for Anthony Barella is going to tie himself up with Eagle and Matty O after nine holes. And I'm, sp I'm sorry we can't be spoiler free, but we're about to show a scoreboard for everybody else, so you might as well know uh, what's happening elsewhere in the field. Yeah, been a pretty exciting round to watch on this front nine so far on Fox Run Meadows. Two players six under par to catch up with Anthony Barella, and they are all tied for second again here on Chase Card. And it sure looks like Isaac Robinson has opened up a lead, although we keep saying it, anything can happen when there's this much out of bounds and so much great talent in the field. Very excited to bring you the Chase Card Final Nine conclusion of the 2023 World Championships. Indeed we are. Thank you guys for tuning in to Gatekeeper Media. We have nine holes left in 2023 World Championships. For Andrew Fish, I'm Nathan Queen. We'll see you guys out there.